Hey everybody, welcome to the immediate post-show magic here on this Tuesday, the 30th of July, 2013. You know what I have here? Something very, very important. These are our privacy rights and we should protect them as best we can. Know what I have over here? This is our security, our national security, our individual safety, unbelievably precious. How do we balance these? Ben Franklin has that quote that I've loved forever about those that are willing to sacrifice essential liberties in order to achieve temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. And I am getting that thrown up at me a lot these days because I have taken the, um, it's not that I value security more than privacy. It is that these NSA surveillance techniques, which I absolutely know have kept me and my family safe and you and yours for years, I, I don't distrust them until I have a reason to distrust them. And, and listen, this is up in the worst set of circumstances. Obama is president and I still trust them. Now, I don't think that makes me naive. It means I trust the folks at the NSA, except for weasels like Edward Snowden. It means I trust them. I trust CIA guys. I trust these people, you know, hunched over their laptops, listening for data points that may, may indicate terrorism is afoot. They're not listening to my phone calls. They're not listening to yours. They don't care. What they care, they might start to care if I start to get 20 text messages from Kabul, Afghanistan. Or if you start to make a lot of impassioned phone calls to Yemen, then they might start to care. We always complain right after 9-11, why didn't we connect the dots? Why didn't we connect the dots? And after 9-11, we always say that in order to prevent further 9-11s, we must connect these dots. There are dots to connect and we have to connect the dots. Guess what? I'm a dot. You're a dot. An insignificant significant dot, as long as we're not doing anything, we become a significant, potentially noteworthy dot if there's something behaviorally in our emails or calls that makes something in the software go, whoop, whoop, this might be terrorism. And then they go through the FISA courts and they jump through the various hoops and maybe they have terrorism or maybe they don't. Anyway, the process that I've just described is kryptonite to sort of the Rand Paul wing of the uber libertarian conservative movement. I have an enormous amount of respect for Congress, for Senator Paul, and for you know the, the for libertarianism in general. I, I that's, there's a lot of that blood that courses through my veins. But there are a couple of places libertarianism takes you that I will not go. One of them is drug legalization, one of the worst ideas since the beginning of time, and the other is this alarm based on what people in power might do with this information on us. Number one, every I wish everybody would stop thinking that they're they're listening to your phone calls. They're not. They're noticing the number that you call from, the number you call to. And if there is something odd about either over a period of time, that might be, again, a dot to connect and maybe prevent a future terrorist attack. And tell me why that's a bad idea. It's because we're freaked out that, that people in power might be snooping around in our lives. They don't care about our lives. They're busy. They have stuff to do. You've surely seen the articles about the sheer volume of data necessary to have this universe of dots that may one day need connecting. They're building some massive warehouse out in Utah that everybody's got the willies about. I was like, oh, what's that? I'll tell you what it is. It's a place for data storage. Data storage, one sliver of which might just save your hide when the next 9-11 is being hatched. So, you know, it, here's the interesting thing. You know where that places me? It places me in the Rand Paul Chris Christie. Well, here's this again. In the Rand Paul Chris Christie. Well, I guess if that's Governor Christie. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it places me in the Christie camp where I have not spent a whole lot of time lately with his fawning over Obama in the post-hurricane Sandy world, his thoroughly ineffective self-absorbed key, uh, self keynote speech at the Republican convention last year, uh, just the insufficient support of the Romney Ryan ticket. It's been a tough year for me and Chris Christie. And overall, the list of things that I admire about Senator Paul is longer than the list of things that I admire about Governor Christie. But on this one, where Governor Christie has said, look, you know, be libertarian if you want to, but there's some danger here in being cavalier about uh, what, we are, uh, what we are needing to pay attention to in order to fight terror. So it all just makes it very, very interesting. And this battle may play out in the, uh, in the 2016 presidential race, where you may have a Chris Christie and a Rand Paul candidacy. And wouldn't that be something I just enjoy talking 2016, because every word I speak gets us closer to that magical day 
when this nightmare will uh, will hopefully come to an end. Well, our little uh, time together here is at an end, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining me on The Mark Davis Show, 7 to 10 Central Time. And be sure to catch us on the KTXD TV Partnership, which is Channel 47 over the air, Channel 47 on uh, Dish Network, Channel 47 on DirecTV, Channel 47 on AT&T, other numbers on other systems. Check local listings, as they say. Uh, you can also do ktxdtv.com. Puts you right in the studio with me from the for the first half of the show, like 7 to 8.30, and that's just enormous good times. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, watching, listening, absorbing us in whatever form you like. Mark Davis here on 660 AM, The Answer.